Okay, so let's try this third problem. And this problem is going to give us an answer that will be a repeating decimal. And I'll show you what that looks like when you're using the standard algorithm for division. So we have 6,432 divided by 396. I'm going to start by looking at just 643 divided by 396. Um, and that's going to be only one time because if I estimate this to be 400, 400 times 2 would be 800, which is well over 643. So I already know it's just going to be one time. So 1 times 396 is 396, and I need to subtract. 3 minus 6 can't do. Borrow a 10 from there, put it here. 13 minus 6 is 7. 3 minus 9 can't do. Borrow a 10. 13 minus 9 would get me 4. 5 minus 3 gets me 2. So now I have 247, but I have another digit here I can bring down. So I'm going to bring this digit down to here, and now I have 2,472 divided by 396. So again, I'm going to think of this as 400. How many 400s can I get into, estimate this to be about 2,400? I know that I can get two 400s in every 1,000, so that would get me four 400s out of 2,000, and still have some left over. So I'm going to estimate to about five 400s to get into 2,000, and then I have a 472, which is room enough to fit another 396. So I'm going to estimate and say 6 times 396 is the number I need to be multiplying. So on this side, I'm going to go ahead and multiply real quickly what 396 times 6 equals. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 9 is 54, plus 3 is 57. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 5 is 23. So I can see right now 2,376 is pretty close to 2,472, so I chose the right number. So I'm going to put a 6 here, and then 6 times 396 equals 2,376, and I need to subtract those two numbers. 2 minus 6 can't do, borrow a 10, 12 minus 6 is 6. 6 minus 7 can't do, borrow a 10, 16 minus 7 is 9. And then 3 minus 3 is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0. So now I have 96 here. I still have some left over, but I don't have any more digits. So again, I need to put a decimal point. But when I do, immediately put the decimal point right above it. So that way I know any more numbers I put up on top are not whole numbers. They'll be parts of a number. And here, the zeros that come after are not changing the value of this original number because I can write that original number as point zero 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 zero, and it doesn't, it means the same thing. But I'm going to use those to my advantage for this algorithm. So now I have a zero to bring down. I'm going to bring down the zero to here, and now treat this as 960. How many times can 386 go into 960? I'm going to estimate to be two, because two of um, two 400s would be 800, which is pretty close. So let's just get the exact amount that I'm going to have to put down here. Um, 6 times 2 is 12. 2 times 9 is 18, plus 1 is 19. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 792 is what I get when I multiply 396 by 2. So now 2 times 396, 792 goes here. Subtract those two. 0 minus 2 can't do. Need to borrow a 10, bring it here, 8. 5 minus 9 can't do, need to borrow a 10, put it here. 15 minus 9 is 6, 8 minus 7 is 1. Still have some left over here, so I'll just use those zeros. I'm going to bring down another zero, and let's see if I've made any mistakes. No, I haven't. Okay, good. So now I am going to put another zero here. And I have 1,680 divided by 396. How many, about how many 400s would go into about 1,600? I know that 4 times 400 is 1,600, so I'm going to say about 4. And let's just double check on the side here. 396 times 4. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 9 is 36, plus 2 more is 38. 
and then 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 more is 15. So I have 1,584, and if I um, write 4 right here, 4 times 396, then would be 1,584. And um, I need to subtract them. So 0 minus 4, can't do. Need to borrow a 10. 10 minus 4 is 6. 7 minus 8, need to borrow a 10. 17 minus 8 is 9. 5 minus 5 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, I have 96. Now, if I'm paying attention to what's happening with my answers down here, I should notice, even though it's difficult with all this scratch scratch work up here, that 96 is the same number I got up here. And since it is the same number, it means that I'm going to put the exact same number up here that I did when I was deciding what 960 divided by 396 equals. Now, if I can't tell because all of these markings here from doing the subtractions is in the way, I could go ahead and continue dividing just to see what I'll get. And I'm going to do that to show you where a pattern begins. So, I have 96. I'm going to bring down a new zero here so that I have 960. 960, how many times does 396 go into 960? And we decided that it was 2 because 792 was pretty close to 960. Um, so now, when I write a 2 up here, do you see that this is the same number that's there? So if I write 2 times 396, I'm going to get 792. If I subtract these two, I should get the same number that I got here, which is now hard to read. But let's go ahead and do it. 0 minus 2, can't do. 10 minus 2 is 8. 5 minus 9, can't do. 15 minus 9 is 6. 8 minus 7 is 1. I now have 168. And I still have some left over here, so I can bring down a 0. And I can keep going, but since we see a 2 here, and we see 1,680 being the same number that was up here, what's going to happen is we're going to find ourselves in a vicious cycle. We're going to go round and round and round. We're going to keep getting the same answers, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4. Just to prove the point, we'll go ahead and divide this and see if we get 4 that goes right there. And by the way, that is not a decimal point. That is bad ink. So 1,680 divided by 396 if we estimated that to be 400, we can say 400 times 4 is 1,600. So 4 times 396 gets us 1,584. And we can see we already did the calculations over here, so that means we already used 4 somewhere. But let's go ahead and put 4 up here. 4 times 396 gets us 1,584, which is the same number we got up there. So when we subtract, we should get the same number we got up here, and so on and so on. So you can see that there's a pattern that's repeating. We're going to continue to get 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4 if we continue dividing this way. So what we need to do is we need to write our answer as 16 and 24 one hundredths, but we put a line over the top. What it means is six, that the number really is 16.24242424, etc. But instead of writing all of that, we can just write 2, 4 with a line over the part that keeps repeating. It's very important that in a problem like this that you pay attention to whether or not you're starting to repeat in your calculations down here. Um, that will be a trigger that you're going to end up with a repeating decimal up here. We went through and calculated two more times just to see if this is going to repeat and just so I can show you the pattern. And it was hard to see in our scratch scratch down here. But um, now that we see that, we can stop because we know that no matter what we do, we're going to keep ending up with more 2 4s, 2 4s, 2 4s. Um, and so then we just backed out of that and wrote 2 4 with a line over the top. Okay, so now we've done three problems, and what I want to do is make sure that we understand that there are different alternative ways to write 
um, the answers for each of these problems. So you remember that in problem number one, we had 138 for our answer. 138 is the answer, um, really is there's only one way to write it for this type of problem because it is a whole number. Um, there isn't a decimal value, there aren't additional parts to the holes that, um, that we result in in our answer. So really, there's only one way to write an answer. Or if we wanted to, we can write 138.0. It doesn't change the value, it's just another way to show the decimal uh, expansion. Um, but in, in the second problem, we have 426 and then 25th, 25 one hundredths. So 426.25. There are three ways to write that one. Let me do that. Okay. So um, the first way is to write it like the decimal expansion. Um, this particular decimal is a terminating decimal because it stops. Um, it stops it to 5. It didn't continue into other numbers and it doesn't repeat. So 426.25 is a terminating decimal. That's one way to write our answer for this division problem. Another way sometimes you might need to write the answer is in fraction form. So if you did have to do that, you would write 426 and 25 one hundredths. Or this could be 1 fourth. And then another way, sometimes you're just asked, what's the remainder? Because it depends on the context that you're doing the division for in the real world sense. Depends on the context. Maybe you don't need to know the the decimal value or the or you don't need to see it written in fraction form, but you just need to know how many is left over after you try to divide up the number uh, by 20. And I apologize for messing up on that one. Big time. Okay, and then on this third problem, there are a few different ways to write this problem. We saw that 2, 4 was repeating, so what this is called is a repeating decimal. Well, that one's a terminating decimal because it stops at 2, 5. Repeating decimal is 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4. There's a certain number of digits that are repeating over and over and over again. Um, so we would write that with this line over it, just like I talked about earlier. Or if we wanted to, really the only other way to write this problem is to show estimated values. You could say 16.24, that it stops at 2.4 and doesn't repeat, but you would have to use this little squiggly sign to show that it's approximately 16.24. Or you could just say it's approximately 16, or approximately 16 and 24 one hundredths, but that would show that there's a little bit more to the value. Um, if you wanted a more precise answer, then 0.24 with a line over it would give you the most precise answer you can provide.